Hallelujah. Good morning. How are you all this morning? Are you awake? Good. Just give the Lord a mighty shout this morning. Oh, hallelujah. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit. And uh, we just thank you, Father, for this region. We thank you for California, Father, and everything that you're birthing here and releasing here. And, um, Lord, I just thank you for Pastor Mike and Pastor John and his wife and his family, Father, um, and just everything they're birthing here and doing here, Father. Um, And we just bless them in Jesus' name. Um, But, yeah, we're really excited to be here, and uh, we love Pastor John and his wife and Pastor Mike and Monica and their family. They're just awesome. We got to spend all night hanging out with them, and uh, we hung out with them. Like he said, they passed through Nashville, and we were actually home for a change, so we just got to spend the whole day. We went to the American Pickers and the Johnny Cash Museum and the Hard Rock and the Ryman, and we just went all over, and we just had just an amazing time. Um, but you know, the Lord wanted me to release, and tonight we're going to be, um, praying for everybody for miracles. We're going to be flowing in the gifts, words of knowledge. And, um, so if there's somebody that you, uh, know that needs a miracle, you know, needs a real miracle, um, we, we want to pray for them. You know, we've been really going after, um, the greater miracles. How many of you know, we want to go for the greater things. Amen. And so, you know, this year we, uh, just a few months ago, actually, we saw there was a woman that came to our meetings in Milwaukee, and she had been diagnosed with eight stage four brain tumors, and um, she had been given six weeks to live. And uh, my husband and I prayed for her. She came to, you know, an afternoon session. And so, you know, sometimes you don't have a word of knowledge, Sometimes you're not flowing in just the healing anointing. Sometimes you have to pray for people by faith. And you have to speak the healing word over people and expect that because the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed, that the Lord's going to release that. And so we prayed for her, and a week later we got a testimony back that she was totally healed Every brain tumor dissolved, and they had the scans and everything. And so um, she's she's uh, she they've been giving her a clean bill of health, amen. And so we've seen that we saw in New York, we prayed for a woman. Um, it was a Sunday morning, and I always joke and say it's it's amazing when God can move on a Sunday morning. <laughs> you know, everybody's uh, looking for their you know the lunch and everything, but I'm just kidding. But um, so there was a woman there, and um, she had been uh, diagnosed with multiple tumors in her abdomen. And it was Sunday, and Wednesday she was scheduled for a full hysterectomy to take all of the tumors out. And as she came forward, her daughter was weeping uncontrollably because she was so afraid for her, for her mother. And, you know, I mean, we pray for a lot of people, and, you know, people, um, you know, their ears, deaf ears pop open, and, um, you know, backs are healed. We've had uh, new eardrums recreated where they had holes in the eardrum. Their, their eardrum was recreated. We've had cartilage created. But then there's those, those certain, you know, there's certain things that people can just live with, and they're like, well, if the Lord heals me, you know, it's great, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. But then there's those certain situations you find yourself in where you ha- you're praying for someone and God has to move. Amen. And so it really comes down to what you really believe. And so we prayed for this lady. And that Wednesday, she went to the doctor. And he did the x-rays. He did the MRI. And he said, all of the tumors have completely dissolved, and they canceled the surgery. Come on, give God a shout for that. Come on, God has given you authority over the spirit of cancer. He's given you authority over the spirit of death. And so I'm telling you, if there's somebody that needs a miracle tonight, I want you to bring them. We're going to be really going after um, going after that thing. And so Jesse's uh, back at the hotel right now. He's praying into tonight. He's getting the word of the Lord for tonight. And we're going to be really uh, going for it. And so we're doing um, some other meetings in the area too. We'll be on Wednesday night, Thursday night. You can um, find out on our website or on Facebook um, what our other meetings in the region are going to be. But um, 
you know, this morning I really felt, and I wanted to share a dream that I had with you guys, a prophetic dream, because, um, you know, we've been on the road every weekend, and we've been, uh, we were just in Kansas the week before that, we were in Texas, you know, every weekend we're on the road, and so I had a dream when we were in Kansas, the last night we were in Kansas, and so I felt like the Lord wanted me to share about it and release about it this morning. Um, in California, I felt like it was for um, the state of California, but many, a few of you have mentioned to me, you saw my word um, on Elijah list, it went up yesterday, <laughs> I didn't actually know it went up, because I was on planes, on and off planes all day yesterday, so I didn't know until Pastor John came and picked us up, and I look on my phone and I saw that it was up there, um, about mantles of authority, and um, I released a, a, a word that went with that, um, a, a couple months ago or a month ago um, called uh, governmental glory and you know the Lord's been um, speaking to me about that a lot lately and he's been having me teach on it the four dimensions of the glory and uh, specifically governmental glory and so I had a dream when when we were in Kansas and in the dream I walk into this this bedroom and then these uh, gems, this gemstone appears. It was like it just manifested out of thin air. It was like a big diamond, about this big. And I picked it up, and I and I turned to um, Jesse, and I said, "Wow, look at this! This is pow this is amazing!" And I sit it back down, and suddenly, twelve more gems or eleven more gemstones popped out of it like manifested out of the big gemstone. And so there were 12 gemstones. And, you know, 12, the number 12, um, if you look at it biblically, scripturally, it represents government, you know, heavenly government, kingdom government, kingdom authority, and it represents the apostolic. Um, you know, in scripture, we see that there were 12 apostles, 12 tribes, the tribes of Judah, and there were 12 gemstones set into the breastplate of the priest. So um, 12 represents government, it represents the apostolic, and it represents time. You know, we have 12 hours, um, you know, on a clock. We have 12 uh, months in the year. So um, it, it, it has a lot of symbolism, and I have actually been teaching on um, governmental glory for about a month now and so I had this dream and I felt like it was uh, for um, America God is restoring um, government the heavenly government of God in America and if you look around you and you see everything that's happening in America you might ask yourself what is going on but then there's also a, a great deal happening in the spiritual realm. There are shakings in the spirit. There are rumblings in the spirit. God is releasing and raising up a new generation, a generation that carries uh, governmental authority, apostolic authority, and kingly authority. And so um, this dream actually, I felt like it was confirming everything that the Lord had been speaking to me about. And so that's, that's what I want to teach on. Uh, today and so right before we got on the plane we got on the plane Saturday morning Friday night Todd Bentley I'm sure many of you know Todd um, he's our spiritual father he actually was in Nashville and was preaching and so we said let's go and see him on Friday night before we have to fly out so we went to see him and he began to talk about um, the 12 city prophecy that Bob Jones released um, um, and where he's talking about the billion soul harvest and he began to talk about the 12 city prophecy, and I said, that's strange, the 12 gemstones and the, you know, the government and everything God's speaking to me about. And um, so he began to talk about the 12 city prophecy, and then he went into talking about how out of these 12 cities, they will radiate so much glory that it will extend for 500 miles past that city limit. And he said, and if every city... That happens, and it and the glory. There's going to be like a glory radius within 500 miles of each city. It will cover 98% of America. 
And so this began to, he said, a glory radius. And I just started to think about, you know, this governmental glory and 12 being representing government, the government of God, because there's a government in the supernatural realm. Just as we have a government in America, there is a hierarchy in the kingdom, and there is a government in the kingdom. And we're called as believers, and the Bible calls us kings and priests, and we're called to release the justice and the jurisdiction of God. Um, And so... I thought it was really powerful. And then Todd begins to talk about redeeming time. And he begins to talk about the 12 months, and, the, and, the, and he begins to talk about a clock. And he starts to talk about the tribe of Issachar. And now when I had this dream, um, the 12 gemstones, they were diamonds. And I had actually researched the 12 gemstones sent to the, pra- the, the breastplate. And one of the gemstones that were diamond represented the tribe of Issachar. And so Todd begins to talk about the tribe of Issachar and said they study the times and the seasons. And um, they study, you know, the heavens and the times and the seasons. And I said, that's really interesting. And Todd began to talk about redeeming time, redeeming lost time. And so the Lord began to speak to me, and he said, I am redeeming lost time over America, and I'm releasing my governmental authority, my governmental, uh, my kingly, heavenly system back to America. And so that's what the Lord um, was, was speaking to me about. And I really believe that God's raising up a generation. It's not just about a man or a woman. And yes, men and women can um, carry a mantle. And I do want to talk about this morning, I want to talk about mantles of governmental authority that can rest on a man or a woman. But there is a mantle that will rest on a man and a woman And there's a mantle that will rest on a city, but people will come under that mantle and begin to release the glory of God operating out of that mantle. And so you, you see in scripture where Elijah had a prophetic mantle, a prophet's mantle, and people would come under that mantle and suddenly would begin to prophesy. And so that's what I want to talk about. I actually want to teach to you this morning, and I know it's a Sunday morning. I could probably teach on this for two hours, but I won't because it's a Sunday morning. But I do want to give you the basic gist, and I want to talk about the four dimensions of the glory, okay? Is this good this morning? Are you following? Awesome. And you can also read the words on um, Elijah List, too, if you want to get even more in depth. Um, but The first dimension, uh, you know, the Bible says that we go from glory to glory. And, you know, it says that we go from glory to glory because there are dimensions in God's glory. And so the first dimension of God's glory is called the abiding glory. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells within you? So every believer, when you were born again, you received an abiding glory. The day that you were born again, the Spirit of God moved into you and made your spirit and your body his habitation. The glory of God dwells on the inside of you. The throne of God, I always say, my spirit is God's throne. Okay, God is enthroned within your spirit. That, that realm of the holy of holies, um, that, that, uh, that glory of God that dwelled in the Ark of the Covenant, no longer dwells in the Ark, it dwells within you. You are the tabernacle. So you have received an abiding glory. So just repeat after me, God lives in me. Say, I'm bone of his bone. Say, I'm flesh of his flesh. So the Holy Spirit entwines himself with you in your spirit. And um, there is a power within you that you're called to release. Um, But it takes revelation to unlock that power on the inside of you. You know, a lot of people say, well, I have the glory of God in me, but why am I not, you know, manifesting this? Why am I not seeing, you know, miracles? Why am I not seeing? It takes revelation to unlock the power of God within you. I always say that revelation unlocks the power of God on the inside of you, and faith is the medium that releases it to the world. 
Okay? So, the abiding glory. Now, dimension two of uh, God's glory is a higher level. It is called the priestly anointing. Um, I call it a realm of atmosphere. Sometimes you'll hear people say the glory within and the glory upon. Okay, there's a difference. You have an abiding glory on the inside of you, but then you carry a personal realm or atmosphere of the presence of God, of the glory of God. And how thick and tangible that presence is around you depends on you. It's up to you. Um, we hear that Peter's shadow healed the sick. And that wasn't just his shadow. It was the overshadowing glory of the Almighty. And so worship has all to do with that glory realm that you'll carry like an atmosphere. Um, when you've been with Jesus, you'll carry his presence. You know, his presence carries life. It carries power. It's like an electricity. People will feel it on you. They'll sense it on you. And Catherine Coleman is a good example of this. Um, she spent so much time in the presence of Jesus. And, you know, they say Catherine Coleman never prayed in tongues. She said, I never saw an angel. I never saw a vision. And I never saw Jesus. But she had one of the most incredible healing mantles, um, uh, like, of our time. She just, I remember one time she was ministering, and across the stage, across the platform, there were empty wheelchairs from, you know, multiple people that had been healed, gotten out of wheelchairs, there were crutches laying. And she turned to a group of ministers on the stage, and she said, any one of you could have had this anointing if you had paid the price. And see, there is a price to be paid for the glory of God. There's a price to be paid for the anointing and for the anointing for miracles. I remember A. A. Allen wrote a book called The Price of Miracle Working Power. And it has all to do with how much time you are willing to spend in the secret place, in worship. And um, so there's a, a, an atmosphere of heaven that you'll carry with you. And Catherine Coleman carried, so, you know, I remember Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm 10 times bigger in my spirit than I am in my normal body, in my mortal body. And so your spirit and, and the Holy Spirit, the atmosphere of his presence um, can overshadow you. And I remember they talked about Mariah Woodworth Eder, people miles from her services would suddenly just come under the Holy Spirit, come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, begin weeping, have visions of Jesus. They'd get saved, and they weren't even at the meeting. They didn't even know why they were experiencing this, because there was such a weighty glory that she carried. And it comes from the secret place. It comes from worship. And so that is the second dimension of God's glory. Um, St. Teresa of Avila was a pioneer of contemplative prayer, which we call wordless prayer, um, where she would just literally sit and soak in the presence of Jesus. And she said, it's foolish to think that we will enter into heaven without first entering into ourselves. See, she understood that heaven is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. And you're called to release that kingdom. But many times we, we worship God from the perspective that we have to pull Christ down. We have to rend the heavens and pull the glory down, pull his presence down. And we don't have to do that because the Bible says, think not that we can pull Christ down from above or pull him up, bring him up from the deep. But what say you? The word is nigh thee. It is even in your heart and in your mouth. See, the word is Christ, and you have that kingdom, you have that glory on the inside of you. And if you'll worship from that uh, standpoint, that Christ is within me, my spirit is intertwined with his spirit, I'm bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, then you'll go to deeper levels in your prayer life, in the anointing, in the glory. And um, Ezekiel 47 talks about a river and he had a vision of a river flowing out of the temple. And he said at first it was ankle deep. And as he kept walking out from the temple, it was knee deep. 
and then it was waist deep, and then it was chest deep, and then pretty soon it was a river that he couldn't walk through. He had to swim through. And that, that river in Ezekiel 47 is a prophetic picture of the glory of God flowing out of believers. And so you have the glory of God like a river. And the further that you pour out, or the more of the glory that you pour out, the deeper the river gets. That's why someone like Catherine Kuhlman could just get on the stage and she didn't have to, to preach or hype anything up. She could just talk about her hair. She could just talk about the Holy Spirit. And suddenly the presence of God would just overwhelm the room. So much so that it wasn't just a foot in front of her. It wasn't just two feet in front of her. But it was a glory radius around her that filled entire stadiums. And people suddenly, you know, f uh, like 200 feet from her, they're, they're, they're getting out of wheelchairs. You know, rheumatoid arthritis. Bones are popping and snapping back into place. And so she had had such a powerful realm that she carried and it's just the presence of Jesus but it's up to you it's not a sovereign thing we can't always depend on the sovereignty of God to pour out a revival or to pour out miracles sometimes it has to do with us with the choices that we make on a daily basis to go after the presence of God to cultivate a powerful prayer life a powerful prayer and fasting in our own life and to actually step out and begin to pray for for people you know I heard that Heidi Baker got a word that she was going to see deaf ears open and so she started praying for people and she prayed for over 900 deaf people before she saw one deaf ear open and many of us will pray for one person for a cold and if they don't get healed we give up you know it's called persistence it's called determination it's a different kind of hunger than you know going to the meeting and getting stirred up and, and you're in the worship and you're hungry and you're excited and you're like God pour it out it's a different kind of hunger it's a consecration it's like God I believe your word I believe what you said I believe your promises I believe the words that you've spoken over me and I'm gonna stand on them and I'm gonna keep pressing and keep going for it no matter what because I believe it it's in my spirit come on so this is good so the river of God is within you and that's the second dimension of God's glory now the third dimension dimension three is the corporate glory I like to call this the realm of atmospheric miracles or the realm of possibility this is when not just this isn't just um, tied to one person this has to do with a body of believers coming together in a corporate worship setting and releasing everyone is releasing that glory that that realm that they carry that abiding glory they're releasing that in worship you know, we have many words for prayer in the Bible, Greek words, but they all translate in English as prayer. So when we read prayer, we typically think of our supplications, our asking God for something, or our list of demands, or things we need God to do in our life. And, um, but actually, there's many words. There's four main Greek words for prayer that all translate into English as prayer. But the one that is most commonly used in the Greek is prosuke, and it actually means worship in the Greek. And so that, that um, when it talks in Revelation about the prayers of the saints going up as a fragrant incense and filling the golden censer, and the golden censer tipping over, that word there is not supplication. That word there is prosuke, which means worship. So the worship of the saints fills the golden censer. And so prayer is actually really just worship and soaking in the presence of God, magnifying his name, magnifying. Um, and so as we begin to release that worship, as a corporate body, it attracts the angelic. 
It attracts the angels, the ministering spirits, the flames of fire. It attracts them. And so you begin to create a realm in the room of his presence because the worship draws his presence. And you're releasing the glory that he's put on the inside of you. And it's humility to accept that God has transformed me. That he's put his spirit inside of me. That he's filled me with his power and with his glory. And so as you come together, there is a stronger anointing, a stronger glory that begins to build in the atmosphere. And this is the realm where anything can happen. This is the realm where miracles can happen just out of the atmosphere. This is a realm where things that could have happened in 10 years, you know, when, we're sp- when a word is spoken over us, we carry that word in us. And eventually, over y- the years, as we step into that and grow into that, we'll give birth to a promise in the natural. But in the realm of possibility, the realm of his glory, as a corporate worship setting, anything is possible. And things that could have taken 10 years in the natural can take 10 minutes. Because you're entering into the throne room of God. You're entering into a heavenly realm. And anything is possible in the heavenly realm because there's no time. There's no time in the heavenly realm. Did you know that the person that you see yourself as in the future, the person who's got it all together, the person who's financially stable, the person who is moving in signs, wonders, and miracles, the person that's got everything together that's strong, that's anointed, that's powerful. Did you know that you're already that person? In the supernatural realm, you are already that person. Did you know that your spirit is already perfected? Come on. I remember John G. Lake. Um, John G. Lake was a powerful healing minister, and when he was uh, p- praying for people um, in South Africa, I remember there was one time that the bubonic plague was, many of you might have heard this story, but the bubonic plague was ravaging in South Africa, and so many people were dying, and he and his team were helping to bury the dead bodies, but they were the only team that wasn't contracting the disease and dying. And so these, um, these people, these officials came to him and said, why are you and your team not dying? And see, he had an incredible understanding of the glory of God and the life of God living on the inside of him. And he looked at them and he said, as long as the Holy Spirit is flowing into my soul and body, no germ will attach itself to me, for the Spirit of God will kill it. This is the law of the Spirit of life. That's, that's exactly what he said to them, word for word. And see, did you notice that he said, as long as the Holy Spirit is flowing into my soul and body. He didn't say spirit, soul, and body. Because his spirit is already perfected. But if you stay, keep your mind renewed to the word of God that says the life of God lives within you, you're transformed, you're a new creature in Christ, you are a partaker of the divine nature, if you will renew your mind to that, then suddenly your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body will all be in alignment with one another. The mind, the body, and the soul are subject to your spirit, which is perfected. I don't know how I got on that rabbit trail. We were talking about the corporate anointing. Um, Come on. But you guys are pulling some things out of me. But it's awesome. The corporate anointing, anything can happen. The worship ushers in the angelic. The presence of God will fill a room and gifts will begin to operate. They'll begin to manifest on a higher plane. People will begin to come into that realm, that mantle, and they'll begin to operate. Gifts will be activated. Have you ever gotten in a worship service and suddenly you started seeing more things than you normally see? Or you start prophesying, giving people words, and and you didn't, you know, you don't normally do that? That's because you're, you're beginning to tap into another realm. You're beginning to tap into the glory. Amos 9.13 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper... 
and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. See, the eternal realm will literally overtake the natural realm. And that's what it's going to take in America to see lives transformed, to see our government transformed. We're going to have to have the heavenly realm, the heavenly government of God, overtake the natural realm. So the realm of glory also holds creative power. Creative miracles can be released and happen right out of the glory of God. And faith is one of the keys to unlocking this realm of glory. See, faith operates on a higher law and dimension than truth, okay, or uh, than, um, than the natural laws of matter, space, and time. See, there is a difference between truth and fact. Fact is tied to our earthly realm. But truth is tied to the word of God, and it is eternal. And so when we operate from the realm of, of truth and not out of the realm of fact, because fact is subjective, um, the fact might be that you have a symptom. The fact might be that your knee hurts. But the truth is that by his stripes, you are healed. And that is the truth about you. Amen? Is this good? Okay, so the fourth dimension of the glory is governmental glory. And this dimension refers not just to a corporate body of believers coming together, but it refers to a glory radius that will happen over a city. See, suddenly, it's not tied to just one person. It's not the abiding glory. It's not just the presence that you or I carry of God. It is when a corporate body comes together, and they all begin to come into the unity of the faith. They all begin to come into worship settings. Their gifts are activated. Suddenly, they're being healed. Revelations beginning to open up. Revelations beginning to stir up. They're beginning to come into unity. And then they don't just keep it within the four walls of the church, but suddenly, they begin to go out and release the kingdom of God. I remember when we were in Pittsburgh um, this past year, we stayed there and we extended for three weeks because, you know, the Lord was doing amazing miracles and signs and wonders. And I remember one night he told me, I want to grow legs out. And I said, okay. Never seen that before, but okay. Like, we'll go with that, Lord. And so um, I, I called it out and there were two people that came up, actually, that had le one leg that was shorter than the other. And there was a boy that came up. His leg was three inches shorter than the other. And as I began to just speak the name of Jesus over his leg, it grew out. It became even. The second person that came up, she had a leg that was two inches shorter than the other, and she said, I have tremendous back pain. I have tremendous hip pain. I, I'm always going to the chiropractor. I'm always limping because of the way I walk. And so her, I prayed over her. Her leg grew out. The next day, she had a chiropractor's appointment scheduled for an alignment. So she went into the chiropractor, and he examined her, and he said, your back is like the back of an 18-year-old. She was, she was in her late 50s, you know. He said, your back is perfect. He said, what happened to you? And she told him what happened at the meetings. So the chiropractor felt the glory of God as she was telling him this, the testimony, and he asked her to pray for him. The nurses, the glory of God broke out. The nurses asked her to pray for them. Then everyone in the waiting room asked her to pray for, for them. And so what was happening was that there was something of the glory of God that was being poured out in the meetings. People were coming, and they were catching it, and they were going out, and they were releasing it, and people were beginning to feel it. It was that personal presence that was surrounding them, that they were releasing, and people in, in just their everyday life were just beginning to, like, encounter it. And that's what the, the governmental glory is really all about. If we could get an army of people like that 
who would begin to grab on to the glory of God and to the power of God and begin to go out and release it in the highways, in the byways, in their marketplace, in their jobs, in their families, then suddenly, and you know, we talk a lot about principalities and warfare in, you know, the stream that we're in. And, you know, I don't focus a lot on that um, because, you know, for every one devil there's two angels and um (laughs) and for every devil there's one of us and we have more power um god's given us authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and so i don't really worry so much about uh warfare i don't go into my closet and um you know start you know going into (laughs) warfare but there is you know something called a principality and a lot of people you know they talk about we went on to the mountain and we were tearing the principality down and like that and that's okay but really what breaks the power of a principality is um revelation when a body of believers will come into a revelation if you've ever been into a region where there's um, a principality of poverty and it brings people into the mindset of poverty and they don't even realize that they're under that thing um, there can be a spirit of religion that will be over a region I'm from the Bible Belt I'm from Alabama so there's a very strong religious spirit and um, what happens is a body of believers will begin to be taught the Word of God and they'll not just information but revelation because preaching information will never manifest anything but preaching revelation will there's something called an unction and when an unction comes upon you you'll begin to speak rhema a rhema word is when the holy spirit is speaking directly through you and it's not you speaking anymore and when you and when the unction comes upon you suddenly you can cut through that that holy spirit that unction will cut through every emotional barrier that a person has every uh, spiritual barrier barrier every religious barrier everything um that has set itself up against the spirit of god coming in it will cut right through to the quick of their spirit i remember uh, in the bible when peter stood up and preached and three thousand came into the kingdom the bible says they were pricked in their hearts because he was operating under an unction and so when we have preachers that will preach revelation and not just information suddenly people will begin to understand the real revelation of what we've received through the cross and through the gospel of Jesus Christ and so they'll begin to get excited and they'll begin to get hungry and they'll go out and they'll release that Bethel is a good example Um, I remember John G. Lake, he's actually the one that started the Healing Rooms ministry. And he had the Healing Rooms in Spokane, Washington. And there were 100,000 medically documented miracles within a five-year span of time. And so that is a governmental Uh, glory that's a governmental mantle and it can rest on an individual also we're in California Amy Simple McPherson had a mantle for governmental authority there was a story um, many of you might know about who Mariah Woodworth Etter was Um, and she actually lived and had a church in Indiana and there was a a plague a disease that was spreading and it was really bad and a lot of people were dying and she called Amy Simple McPherson and she asked her to come and preach at her church and Amy told her on the phone she said when I get to the border of the town the plague is gonna lift the disease is gonna break and sure enough as soon as she got to the border of the town it broke and people begin to get healed and it stops spreading and so that is a um, mantle for governmental authority there are many things that signify um, a mantle um, signs and wonders you know Elijah had a mantle for governmental authority Moses had a rod of authority and so Elijah um, saw crazy signs and wonders And Elijah once spoke to King Ahab, and he said, Surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. See, he knew that he had 
authority. He knew that he had governmental authority. You know, many things can signify that. Um, changes in the atmosphere, changes in um, weather patterns can signify that. Signs and wonders, um, many things like that. But also, um, like something like what Bethel has, for instance. Um, Bill Johnson, and they're seeing signs and wonders. They had a cancer-free zone, um, you know, because they're equipping a school of young evangelists who are going out and they're teaching them and they're receiving revelation and they're getting in that corporate glory and then they're going out and they're releasing that. Um, so it's changing the whole um, atmosphere. It's changing the whole city of Reading, impacting it greatly. And so there's no king without a territory. The Bible says that we, um, Revelation 5.10 says, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So we're not just called to um, go to heaven, and then everything's going to be great. We're called to reign as kings and queens and priests on this earth. And so God wants to exercise his rulership over the earth and establish the governance of God through you and I. Um, so you're called to go out and release uh, miracles, unstop deaf ears. You're called to hear the voice of God and release the word of God, the rhema word of God to everybody in, in, that you come into contact with, to your family. You're called to reign over sickness, reign over darkness, reign over dividing spirits in your family. Um, God's bringing families together in this time. It's a season of um, unity that God's bringing us into. And so I'm going to transition now because I feel like this is a mantling service this morning. And so if I could get the worship team or somebody to come up and play, if you want to receive um, and be commissioned for this in your region. I just really feel that God is pouring this out. I felt like that's why I had this, um, this prophetic dream just before I came, we came here. And I feel like God is wanting to release over California. He's wanting to redeem lost time in California. And he's wanting to commission everyone in this region for governmental glory and authority to go out and just like the the woman who released that in the chiropractor's office everyone here is called to go out and release that um in your in your job in your workplace in your family amen